Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the R. Kelly Appeal TV. We are so grateful that you're here with us today, December 26, 2021, the last Sunday of 2021. I would like to close this year out by sharing with everyone who listens to this podcast a very merry, prosperous, and positive new beginning. And we are excited to announce our 10th episode and 10 reflects a new beginning in and of itself. So we want to share that with you. And we want to look at the topic of how to heal from emotional trauma. When we talk about emotional trauma, um, we're going to use the life of Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we're going to look at that and how he can handle himself winning an appeal getting uh, his convictions overturned or anything like that, we need to know what he needs to do in order to become a healthy human being even after receiving such gift as freedom again. Now, many of us have the freedom to do as we wish, to go as we, to go where we want and to eat and do what we want to do, right? I hope we are taking advantage of that freedom because Relating to Robert Sylvester Kelly about healing that inner six-year-old young child within the body of that 54-year-old man confined within a jail cell, not knowing how long, what's going to happen. It has to be excruciating, okay? This came to mind as I thought about what life is like for him when I just thought about him, you know? All his, ex all his abilities to exist independently has been taken away. And reliving that nightmare every single night must be difficult to even imagine, let alone live. So God bless you, Robert. God bless you. So being in a jail cell as an adult facing inner realities of unhealed molestation and possible life sentencing can bring about emotional or mental illness. You know, we got to think about that. I had a download the other night that was extreme and I'm going to share it. Um, it was after I had a call that was requesting that an individual speak with my deceased son of three years. The phone call came through. I answered it. And may I speak with Marquise? And I said, um, well, how do you even know him? And they hung up. So, you know, the holidays is a very extreme time of how life generates its emotion. And around the holidays, we get very emotional, some of us may. So I began to think about how fragile the mind can be at certain times. I hope that Robert Sylvester Kelly stays mentally practiced and not allow this challenge to break his emotional mind state. I recall being incarcerated at one time in my life. And as I was coming down from being laced uh, and the traces of LSD, PCP, heroin traces and crack cocaine was in my system. And what I remember was waking up to being in a medical unit of, I thought, a hospital, but it was county jail. And um, as I was coming down from this whatever was that I ingested, I noticed that my mother, who had been deceased as of three years prior <laughs> to this situation happening, my mother was sitting across the hall from me and I'm bamming on the door, talk to me, talk to me. And she was sitting in a statuesque meditation stand. She was just relaxed. She was in, you, you could see her. I could see her, but I couldn't, I couldn't see her because it was in the dark. And I think it was just her energy that I was recognizing that, 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 that I was tapping into. So I called for her and of course she wouldn't answer. Um, but what I did witness through my sweating and tears and detoxing was that she was in a meditative stance, sitting still totally disconnected from me and from life as though she was, again, 
you know, a statue. So I fell asleep, totally confused, woke up the next morning to find the lights on in the room and it was a bathroom. I was paranoid, mentally unstable, um, un prepared for what was going on with within me working on the unhealed little girl inside that was mentally abused at the age of four years old with no type of help none no counseling no type of help and so my point is that when we're healing the inner child within us no matter how old we are that child still needs that healing So alcoholism, addiction of any type and entitlement can make one delusional. So let's go back to Robert Sylvester Kelly. I had a vision that he was visited by his mother, Joanne and Aaliyah. I did not get connections of any specifics regarding a conversation between them. However, I thought about what Kelly would feel like if he saw what I saw when I was incarcerated. The good thing about him is that he is not in a state of detoxing, maybe from alcoholism, possibly. Um, However, he can escape mentally into the world of his music. He does not have to be in that place if he chooses not to, because the mind can go anywhere. We can levitate and elevate our consciousness to go anywhere at any moment, okay? Um... He can also return back to a time when he was being mistreated by his sister, Teresa, and that could cause an emotional episode. So these thoughts must go through his mind at times, and I just hope that he is in control of them. So let's talk about emotional trauma. Emotional trauma is defined as the end result of an event or situation relating to experiences that has left one feeling abandoned, helpless, or confused. Now, we all know that Robert Sylvester Kelly has been left feeling abandoned. He's lost his home. He's lost his career. He's lost his family. He's lost his money. He's lost, you know, the positive vibe that others may seem to have for him um, because of the allegations, because of the convictions and all of that. He's lost his ability to be powerful. And that is a traumatic experience in and of itself. He's feeling helpless because there's no way that he can help himself. And he's been the ruler and God of his life, all of his life, you know? I mean, all of his, you know, with the superstardom. And then I'm sure he's confused. I'm sure he's totally confused. I know a lot of this stuff hit him like a brick wall and he has to face all of it while healing the inner child, the six-year-old abandoned little boy that had no idea that it wasn't wrong to have intimate relationships with his sister. According to an online source, emotion can be healed by a few steps, a willingness to accept that help is needed, to realize that we are in need and in and of assistance to help us figure this thing out. Not always going to the streets, not always going to that one who you think may have the answer or the one with the hearing, the, the listening ear, because they're not going to give you what it is you need. You can tell it to someone who you trust and and with hopes that they will be respectful to the information, okay? Because the world, the world knows how devious people can be. Staff members, guards, sergeants, lieutenants, people who just don't like the idea that you are who you are because of what they said you did, judgment. A willingness to accept that help is needed is the first step. The second is when we know better, we do better. So we accept that the trauma has occurred in one's life. 
So not saying that, oh, it wasn't that bad or, oh, it didn't happen and ignoring, ignoring, ignoring is going to cause more of an ego eruption that when it's all said and done, you can't go back to it and say that this is what happened because guess what? You said it didn't. You said it didn't. Um, it's going to be very disbelieving if you go back and say that the trauma never occurred. Seeking out professionals to assist in the healing. The, once you are ready to take the healing to another level. So if Robert Sylvester Keller is really ready to take this healing to another level, then this can help assist him. He can practice inner peace, stillness, and mindful meditation and use the opportunity to share in a routine such as writing, you know, learning how to read, learning how to write, learning mathematical skills, learning how to educate and influence movement in one's life to keep the mind active, to keep the body active, you know, healing from an emotional stand is going to take some time and it will not happen overnight. And it comes with a lot of work on behalf of the person needing the help. And this is why many of us choose to maybe not stay so connected and committed to helping ourselves. We do this with addiction, with weight, um, obesity, with addiction, and withdrawals and recovery. You know, we do this. Um, emotional illness can come in a form of a dream visualization and unleashed in its meditative state. So the truth behind exposing um, as evidence becomes clear mentally. So we're able to see what it is that we're facing and we have to rise up and face that so it can be worked on and healed. As a thought cannot shed itself off and it replays itself over time again and again in your mind. It's just like an individual who is in an abusive relationship. They feel that, oh, he'll get better. She'll get better. And it never happens. So we're replaying the life of the honeymoon stage over and over and over. So in that, we have to accept what truth is coming up in meditation and really and truly not run from it, but face it. I talked about this in my emotional healing solutions program where, you know, once, once you recognize it, you see it. And when you see it, it's now time to face it. And you will know how you're going to face it. Um, some people can take it to an exact extreme and, you know, go after the individual like, you, you, you know, that that is going to land them into a worse situation than even recognizing that it existed in the first place. Or they will heal and reflect and tell their story so others will know what it looks like. Because if someone around the time of Robert Sylvester Kelly's molestation was sharing in a story that took place in their lives specifically about that, and it got to him, he may have know, known, he may have changed his life. His life had, may have been different. You know, sitting back, re reminiscing on the conversation about how you know, R. Kelly met Andrea Kelly on the back of a tour bus reading her Bible. Maybe he would have stayed committed to Andrea Kelly. Maybe he would not have been so promiscuous. Maybe he would have, you know, done his R. Kelly bit out there in the ego, in the world, and then came back home to his wife and his children. And these are things that I think is very important when we talk about judgment, judgment and judging another, because there could have been many different options. But to what degree does an individual become a monster? These things are, you know, a monster is going to show what has been done to them, um, just like in the case of my son and his murder. 
his murder was done and his the murderer had to be feeling a million times more in pain than the pain that he initiated in order to just feel something and i'm not saying that is right no absolutely not you know he deserves his time you know everyone has their day but i am not one to judge not even my son's murderer because i am here to work on me i'm here to work on how i can become a better person so in the essence of life i can make better judgment decisions better choices upon my own life because if I'm distracted by someone else's story, someone else's life that doesn't relate to mine, I'll never become who I'm supposed to become to get this journey of life right where I've come back to do it. I've come back to get something right. We all have. And so with that, I want to leave you with a thought that you know it's a new year it's going into a new beginning and it doesn't have to be so depressive it can be victorious it can be abundant it can be prosperous it can be progressive you know positively progressed forward and when we sit back and we control our lives and not allow the ego to control our lives we're making better decisions. We're healing ourselves. We're eating healthier. We're walking. We're meditating. We're journaling. We're helping others. And that is a great place to be. So please take some time to love you in 2022. That's the theme. Love you in 2022. It's about you in 2022. You know, create that positive vibration that keeps you balanced. Because in the end, no matter what decisions and choice we make, no matter how fast we make it without thinking, whatever the consequence that comes with that, it's going to be that. It's going to be that consequence. And too many of us has taken advantage of our lives and our freedom and caused circumstances to happen. Cheaters cheat, liars lie, manipulators manipulate, narcissists become aggressive, aggression becomes aggression, you know, aggression on aggression. So, you know, and I'm working on that for myself, how to not engage. And that is a very strong practice, how not to engage while being in the midst of an aggressive situation. And, and yes, I have to work on that. That's working on me. I'm doing me. So I thank you so much for being a part of this podcast for 2021. I hope that this information has been helpful in some form, even if it's just helped one person and that person is me. I am so grateful because it keeps me on focus. I, I listen to my own videos. You know, so I empower you to find something that you're passionate about, that you're empowered to do and go out and do it because we only have this one life to live. Thank you for liking, joining, commenting, subscribing to this podcast. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next Sunday.